In this lesson, we'll discuss why vectors are represented in terms of i and j. Question 1 reads, write the vector negative 5 and 2 in terms of the unit vectors i and j. I want to start off by mentioning that i and j are vectors that have the following configuration. i has the components of 1 and 0, and j has the components 0 and 1. In addition, I want to label this vector, let's call this vector a. And when you write vectors down on paper, you put this arrow at the top of the letter that you use to assign it. Whereas when it's written in literature or digitally, we write it in boldface. So now that I've labeled our vector as A, I want to plot it on an XY plane. If we plot it on an XY plane, it will be somewhere in the second quadrant, specifically at negative 5 and 2 the coordinates negative 5 and 2. So negative 5 this way and 2 upwards. So I'll call this point my vector A and I'll connect it to the origin like this. So this vector is made up of two vectors. It's the resultant vector of this one which has the components negative 5 and 0 and another vector which has the components 0 and 2. Now normally when you write a vector in terms of i and j, you write it like this, where you have a is equal to the vector i and the vector j. And the x component of our vector, negative 5, gets multiplied to this vector. This 2 is written as the scalar for this vector. And from here we can start to understand why i and j notation is used. Remember, i represents 1 and 0, and j represents 0 and 1. If i write down negative 5 as the scalar, and positive 2 as the scalar, and I multiply negative 5 into this vector, this unit vector, using the properties of vectors, this becomes negative 5 and 0, and this becomes 0 and 2. So by adding these two vectors together, we end up with our vector A. So what you see right here is how you'd write the vector A in terms of i and j. Let's apply what we learned to question two as well. The vector V has a magnitude of 20 units and a direction angle of U is equal to 50 degrees. Represent this vector in the form V is equal to AI plus B times J round A and B to two decimal places. Let's go ahead and plot what this would look like on an XY plane. So on an XY plane, we would have a terminal side, a vector essentially, extending from the origin, and it would make 50 degrees with the horizontal. The magnitude of this line is 20. And from this, we can start to learn about this point right here. The coordinates of that point will serve as the scalars that we multiply to vector i and j. So how do we find these two values? We will use trigonometric ratios. So if I create a triangle, opposite of 50 degrees will tell us the y component. And we can find that by using opposite and hypotenuse, sine. So sine times 50 degrees is equal to the opposite over 20. Solving for opposite, we multiply both sides by 20, and we end up with what this value is. So 20 times sine of 50, make sure that your calculator is in degrees, and I get 15.32, 15 decimal 32. This means that this component is 15 decimal 32. To find this one, we do the same thing except we use cosine. So cosine 50 degrees times 20 gives us the adjacent, this side. Let's use our calculator once again. 20 times cosine at an angle of 50, we get 12.86. 12 decimal 86, and that's the adjacent value. So this happens to be 12.86. So if we want to write this out in terms of i and j, 
we write down v, the vector, along the horizontal is 12.86 i, plus along the vertical, we found it to be 15.32 j. And make sure you put arrows on top of the i and j because they two are vectors. This represents again, one and zero, and this represents zero and one. And so there you have it. Now you understand why vectors can be represented in terms of i and j.